Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys prefabs and explain what they are, how they work, and then show you guys the updated way of working with prefabs that they've added in the more recent versions of Unity. So what a prefab is essentially is when you take a game object and you save it to your assets folder as a permanent file that's going to contain a list of settings about that game object and then inside of that prefab asset file is going to contain a list of all the components that the game object would have and the values of all of the settings inside of the game object. So it's the same as having a game object in your scene pretty much but you save it as a file so that it can be referenced later on and you can actually create multiple instances of that prefab game object being the main point of a prefab. So it's basically a set of defaults which you can copy and work with throughout your game when you need copies of the same object such as a monster or a prop within your game. Now whenever you add a object to your scene that is instantiated or a copy of the prefab object you can usually change any of the settings as custom overrides. So if you have a monster and as the prefab it only has 50 HP, you can add it to your scene and then double the HP to 100 as an override. So from one prefab object you can have several variations of the same object within your game and they're very handy to work with. So you can see in the scene hierarchy over here on the left that there is a series of game objects within this default scene. This is the lightweight render pipeline or the LWRP project template that you have as an option of creating your new project from. And if we take a look at the game objects within the scene you can see that two of these nested game objects, the workshop set and the props, are indicated as prefabs and you can see that because the cube for the game object is blue and that also on the right in later versions of Unity you can see an arrow and what this arrow points to is that there is a prefab editor um, so you can click over here on the right arrow for any prefab and you can open the prefab up into kind of its own mini scene that only has the prefab object and any child game objects inside of it and you can edit the default settings that that prefab should have. So if you want to change any value to be the default for anything that's based off of this prefab then you would do that here. So for instance if I wanted to take this ground object and double its size I could change the x and y scale values or actually x and z and then that effectively quadruples its default size. So now if I click the left arrow in the scene hierarchy and we go back out, we can see that this object in the scene that's based on that prefab now has the same values that the prefab itself had. So what's great about this is that if you need to update all of the copies of that object within your game, you only need to do that in one place, which is to open the prefab up which you can obviously do really easily in the hierarchy by clicking the right arrow, but also if you find the prefab within your project, you can double click on it uh, to open it up in that same mini scene for the prefab only. Now, as I kind of mentioned before, there are times when you basically want all of the default settings of the prefab, but you want to change one or two things. So you can do that by setting an override, and all you need to do to set the override is that when you're within your scene, and you have the instance of the object like you can see here in the scene view, the workshop set. Uh, you can just find any value you want and then you change the value. So if I wanted to bump this back to scale of 1 for x and 1 for z, and what you'll see is that any value that is an override is going to be marked black. So we can see that the x value has an override, the y value does not because the 1 is the standard value in the prefab, and then the z is also overrided with 1. So if I open up the prefab, you can see that the prefab still has a scale of 2 and a z scale of 2 as well. But the instanced game object, or the copy, has its own custom values. So sometimes when you set these override values, you might actually want to apply that to the prefab itself because you want to make it permanent for basically any other copy of the prefab throughout your game. So if you want these to be the new defaults, you can also right click on any of your overridden values and apply the override to the prefab. So basically you copy the setting over to the prefab and it becomes the new default. Also if you click on the main instanced game object, in that case this is the prefab that's set with blue, you can see that there is some specific prefab settings over in the inspector in the top right. So you can see prefab, you can open the prefab, you can select the prefab, uh, select will show it where it is in your game project, but you can also click on the overrides drop down menu here and you can apply 
all of the overrides to the main prefab if you desire. So this will take every single value that you've changed and overridden and make that the new default. So in a lot of cases, you only want to apply one of the new values to the prefab. And that's why right clicking on that specific property and applying it uh, directly may be preferable to this. But if you do want to apply every single one at all, you can see the values that are being changed in this list down here, and you can choose to apply them all. You can also revert all of the changes to the prefab defaults if you just want to reset an object to be identical to the prefab. So let's go ahead and click on the ground one more time and apply the scale values to the prefab. So I'm going to right click where it says scale, apply to prefab workshop set. And I'll click up here on the workshop set instance. And then I'm going to select and open the prefab from my project. So if I hit select, you can see that in the inspector, there's an option for opening the prefab here. I can open that up and we can see that the prefab values for the ground have been updated back to the default scale values of 111. So for right now to demonstrate creating a new prefab, I'm going to right click on the example assets and add in a new sphere object. So with this sphere, I'm going to drag it into prefabs so that it is a default object I can instantiate. And now that it's a prefab, we can click on the right arrow to open it up as its own separate object. And maybe in here, I want to set some custom values. So, so I might want to increase the scale of my sphere. So I increased all the values to five. Okay, and then we can go back to our main scene and we can see that its position here isn't great. So probably one of the most common values you would override would be the position of a game object because you might want it to have a very different position depending on what level of your game you're working on or that kind of thing. So I'm going to drag it over there. So now we have our sphere object in this scene, but what if we wanted to add it to another level? Well, let's go create a new scene here. So I'm going to right click and create a new scene and I'll call this sphere test. I'll double click to open it up and save the current scene. And now if I go into our prefabs folder, we can drag any of the prefabs that we have saved to our project and add them to the scene with pretty much no more effort. So I'll drag the sphere in and you can see that the sphere has the same scale values that we customized in the prefab. And now maybe I want another copy of that prefab. So I'll add it in a duplicate sphere uh, so these are separate game objects within the scene, but they both reference the sphere prefab. So I can adjust the transform position of the second sphere, and these values become overrides immediately. And I could also adjust the scale values. If I click on either of these objects and I click the right arrow button, you can see that when we go back to the prefab, it still has all the prefab defaults. But we go back out to the scene and they can be individually customized based on their overrides. So this one is just the prefab default, but this one has its own custom settings. If you ever decide that you don't like the changes you've made to a copy of an object that was from a prefab, you can right click on the values you've changed and hit revert. So in this case, that'll change all of the scale values back to its defaults 555. You can also right click on the individual properties and revert that. So reverting just the Y value, but not the X value there. Okay, now there's one last thing I want to show you guys, and that's that you can actually add a prefab game object to a script inside of the inspector so that when you're deciding something like what enemy do you want to spawn in a given level, you can just drag and drop a prefab as the defaults uh, for whatever you want to create a copy of in your scene. So inside of this scene, I'm going to right click and create a empty. And this is just a game object with nothing attached to it, but a transform and I'll add a new script here. So we'll do new script and I'll just call this spawner. And then I'm going to click on the settings for that script and hit edit to open it up in Visual Studio. So when we open up the spawner script inside of a mono behavior, which is the base class for just about any script you would attach to a game object, uh, there's a method built in by default called void start. So whenever a game object is added to the scene and the script is enabled, it's going to do whatever is in the start method uh, upon that startup just once. So if we wanted to spawn a game object, we would have to reference that game object within script. And so a game object can also be a prefab. So if we say public game object, and I'll just call it prefab here. And what we can do with that prefab is have it spawn in the scene 
after the game already loads rather than existing in the scene beforehand. And the method for creating a copy of an object is instantiate, so we can instantiate the prefab and normally you would add overrides to this with like a custom transform position where you want it to spawn and that kind of thing. But we'll just keep it super simple and just spawn it with the defaults that exist in the prefab game object exactly how they are, just to demonstrate really quickly here. So I'm going to save the script. And when I switch back over to Unity, you can see that the spawner script now has a space to assign a game object. So that could be a game object inside of our scene. I could assign it to the spawner game object itself. But more likely what we'd want to do is instantiate a copy of the prefab. So I'm going to take the sphere object here and assign it there. And uh, for right now, let's actually disable these other game objects. So I'm just going to hide the sphere in sphere one so that there's no uh, visible sphere in the scene. Actually, let's just delete it so that there's no question that when the game object of the sphere pops into the scene that it wasn't there beforehand. So if we go to the game view, you can see it does not exist. Uh, the scene hasn't been loaded. But with the spawner script enabled, as soon as the game starts, the sphere should instantiate. So let's hit play here. And there you go. You have a sphere that popped into the game after the game had loaded based on the simple instructions in our C Sharp script. So obviously you could come up with a much more complex spawner script than that, and you probably should. But as long as you know what prefabs do, how to use them, and how to edit them, as well as overriding settings in the instance objects, then you'll definitely find this to be a really integral part of working within the Unity editor. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.